The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. From TFNN, welcome to the February 23rd fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life happens for us not to us that's right when you and i make that one little two by four shift it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us today you and i we get to go check out the circumstance of these markets we get to go figure out what the bulls and the bears what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and i just past one o'clock in the afternoon i want you to know that i'm absolutely grateful for your presence here but more importantly i'm here to serve you so feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in, 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, well, let your fingers do the walking. You can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Of course, inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. And inside the Tiger's Den, <clears throat> excuse me, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on fantastic and fabulous Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, the Dow up 130 points, trading out 25 over 92. S&P up 21. NASDAQ 100 up 70 points. That's a little over 1%. Semis are up over one, about 1.25%, one up 16 points. So we've got green across the board in the indices. Spot fix index, probably something for you and I to be paying attention to today. Back a uh, minus 7%, down to $1.35. Gold's off about 50. Silver up off nine cents. Uh, Light sweet crude up 61 cents out there. Leading the charge, the upside dollar wise, Equinix up uh, nearly $12. Universal Electric. Electric cars, I don't know what it is, $11.10. $11 UEIC is the ticker symbol. The trade desk up 9 bucks. Financial engines up 8 bucks. Vicor, Vicor up uh, six ninety five. To the downside, it is Universal Display, OLED, having a bad day. 5.5 uh, million shares. The downside off 15%. That's 23 bucks and change. LifePoint Health Services off eight bucks. Nordson Corp down seven. Acacia Communications off seven. Maxar Technology down to about seven bucks. So, but the question that I pose inside the den because it seems like we're basically at about this same place every day this week, ever since I well I got back uh, Tuesday. So. Wednesday, Thursday, and now Friday, where we start off the session with the indices being up, and the sellers seem to come back from lunch, you know, maybe 1, 1.30, 2 o'clock, and are the sellers going to show up again? That's the question. Well, here's what you and I will go ahead and focus on and pay attention to. We'll take a look at a short-term chart to try to help analyze whether or not that may be the case. Now, if we take a look at, again, we use these same tools, all different time frames. They help you and I to be able to anticipate what the message of the markets are. Those tools being, we take a look at wave number seven. Those would be the letter G on my chart out here. And the reason why we show it in letters is because I've got all the Tom the Mark set up sequential combo signals that also show up on my screen out there so those are not going to change those are numbers we take a look at price moving higher in this case doing less relative energy take a look back here this is at about uh, 2 30 in the afternoon right back on uh, december december february 21st price moves higher does with less relative energy the bears show up a little dark cloud cover once price gets below stevie's red line off to the races to the downside 
Then we take a look at this wave number seven that took place. This was at 1230. This is on uh, the uh, 22nd. Today is what, the 23rd? Yeah, so this is yesterday. So as we were coming on the air, you get to wave number seven. What does price do? Moves down, pulls back. Test Stevie's red line continues to go further lower. Now, didn't make a new low, made a higher low. If we take a look at the low back here at about 930 in the evening just a couple of days ago. So where are we at now? Really two patterns that are unfolding. Both of these patterns, either of them, are in essence in play as we speak right now at uh, 1, uh, 11 in the afternoon. We can see that price has been rising, doing it with less relative energy. And as it was doing that, and this is at 12.30, exactly 12.30, uh, we saw a nice little bearish reversal candle form, a little dark cloud cover form. Wave number six versus wave number seven doesn't matter. Either of these patterns are patterns worth paying attention to on whatever time frame it is that you and I are trading on. But what has not occurred thus far, we have not seen price close below Stevie's red line. On a 30-minute basis, 68.30 is about the price point. We're at 68.34. So we'll want to pay attention to that. Why? Because the answer is, to the question, to the riddle out there, is if we see price close below Stevie's red line, stay below it, then the answer is yeah. We're going to see more retracement as we come into the afternoon session. Does this tell us where price goes to? No, it does not. Does this change the longer-term picture that I have um, been like Paul Revere riding on the horse? that these markets are going higher, that we're going to be at back at new all-time highs again? No, it doesn't. But right now, just trying to answer the question, and we're going to find out here. I think we're going to find out during the next uh, half hour. This is a 30-minute chart, so it's only 112. We've got to wait until that 30-minute candle session. So we can see Stevie's red line under pressure right now, but that could just be a test and a rejection Right? Could just be a test and rejection. But look, even if price bounces higher, we get to wave number seven. So that's what's going on. Now, let's say that we don't have the same conditions that take place because that's another possibility. So we take a look at both sides of the trade. So for those of you that like to go ahead and short this market right now, you should be licking your chops based upon the two patterns that we just took a look at. And now you know kind of a threshold, not kind of, you know a threshold that you really want to see price get below before you start firing away. Well, what happens if all those folks that got short the market thought this week the market was just going to cruise lower, and it hasn't, and what will their sphincter muscle look like come 3 o'clock, 3.30, or what have you? Well, the identification that uh, they've decided to fold their cards, in my opinion, will come from the spot volatility index. What you want to be watching for is, do we get below the 50-day exponential moving average? So let's go find out what that number is right now. We're taking a look at a line chart out here. So at the top is the S&P 500. At the bottom in the blue line is the spot volatility index. And you can see it's trading at 1745. The 50-day exponential moving average is 1658. And here is the deal. If price were to close below the 50-day exponential moving average, we haven't been down there, or I should say below the 50-day, since um, January the 12th out there. If you close below that, hey, do yourself a favor, a huge favor. Don't take any shorts into the weekend. Not unless you plan on going out to the beach and suntanning out there. Because that'll be an indication the markets will be doing the... Uh, Who's that uh, auto company? Zoom, zoom, zoom to the upside. Steve Roach from TFNN. You don't buy into that nonsense, do you? You know, you can't time the markets. I didn't. And in 2006, I set out on a mission to do just that. I began by surrounding myself with the greats like Tom O'Brien, Larry Pesavento, David White, and Basil Chapman. I read countless books and even looked to the moon and planets for answers. Now, we both know that trading is 80% mental. So I learned the exact tools that Tony Robbins uses to overcome fear. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability. And last March, the folks at Timer's Digest began tracking my newsletter signals, which through January 18th, 
2018 placed me as the number one gold timer for that exact time frame. Now, I can't officially be recognized until Timers Digest has a full year of signals, but clearly, I've learned how to time the markets, and I'd like to teach you how to do that as well. Subscribers to Mastering Probability gain access to my live and archive workshops where I show you the exact same patterns that earn me this number one ranking. If you're looking for great market calls and an education, sign up for Mastering Probability today at TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. So we do have a couple of questions, a couple of questions that have come in here. Let's try to go right to those. Uh, James uh, writes in, hi, Steve, how's the leg doing? Leg's doing uh, pretty good, but I tell you what, I really tore a muscle in my back while I was in Hawaii as I was kind of nursing my uh, hamstring muscle. Changed my swing up at the plantation course up at Kapalua. Boy, it was in beautiful condition. Like, during the tournament in January where they had the uh, Tournament of Champions up there, uh, the greens had uh, some fungus on them. But by the time that I was there a couple weeks ago, uh, all that fungus had gone away. And course was in just amazing condition out there. But that's neither here nor there. Your question is, um, what do you think about an entry price for Exxon Mobil? Or should I not touch it yet? So with regard to Exxon Mobil, here's what I'm going to suggest to you. If we take a look at this right now, here's our three time frames. So we can take a look at where Exxon Mobil is trading in relationship to its daily, its weekly, and its monthly profiles. Now, in the daily time frame out here, trading at 7701, what you will see is that this is a bullish structured box, meaning 7544 is a pretty good level of support. or should be a really good level of support. Maybe this runs to 80.04. I don't know if it's worth the. I don't know if it's worth the reward risk out there. Here's the problem: the weekly chart. You're well below profiles, and you came down certainly with some big volume out here. You don't see a sign of strength in the daily chart on Exxon Mobil, on, on, in Exxon Mobil. So a bit of a risk there. You're below the monthly time frame, And on a monthly basis, you are trading into the swing point from August of 2015. Now, there was volume there, James, of $387 million. You're at 313 so far. I don't even know how many trading days there are left in the month out here because we have some, obviously, next week. Um, seems like it's going to be a little bit lighter volume, but you would want to see a rejection 
of that swing point, not a close inside that swing point. So 79.29 is really the rejection number that you're looking for. My recollection is you're more of a longer-term trader than a short-term trader. But if you are going to take the trade, for whatever the reason, based on this information, I would say you wouldn't want to enter it until price closed above Stevie's red line. And that is at 70. Well, it is above it. Okay, so, so I've got this little delay now in these charts out here. So 76.67. So if you're short term, you know, your trade is basically a stop below, quite frankly, you really have to put the stop below 73.90 and your target is about 80.04 out there. I don't think that that probably is the type of reward risk that you are looking at. But, um, you know, that's what I see when I take a look at Exxon Mobil. So I hope that that helps you out. Larry in Detroit wants to take a look at really three uh, individual equities out here. He's looking for their TAS profile. So let's give those to him. S-O-X-X. -X. Uh oh, I got to type in the right symbol. D-O-C-C -C is not S-O-X-X. -X. We know that. So here comes the iShares uh, semiconductors for the SOX. And if we take a look at it, uh, daily profile, you're above the top of the box, 179.68. That has a bullish bias. You're above the weekly, 173.35 is the top of the box. You're above the monthly, 158.87. So this tells us, tells me, that price is uh, headed back towards its highs. Now, from a daily perspective chart out here, what you're really going to want to see is there's this gap. Gaps are your friends. The resistance, in this case, your resistance or support. This is resistance. So if, in fact, the SOXX closes above 182.72, then it's going to go ahead and make a run for its high out there in the 188 range. If we take a look at the IBB, that was something else that you wanted. If, if price is where they're at here, I know you wanted Stevie's red line. It's well above Stevie's red line. I can pretty much guarantee you that based on what I just looked at here with regard to market profile. So we don't need to look there. With regard to the IBB, IBB. Now, the IBB has one heck of a wide daily profile. If you take a look at the bottom, and it's a bullish structure, 106.72, 109.51 is the center, and the top is 117.90. So whereas James was looking for maybe a trade inside of uh, ExxonMobil, shoot, the IBB has got a nice wide box. Now, here's where the reward risk uh, could potentially pay off. Now, do you need to put your stop below the swing point of February 9th? Technically, that would be what you would be looking at. Now, that's way down there, 10102, but you could probably gauge it somewhere below the 10672 level. Now, I'm not saying take this trade. We want to do a little bit more work on it. The target of 11790 on the daily may be tough to get through that because if you look at the weekly box out here, this has the bearish structured box. This says 11382 is where you should see some significant resistance. So if you're doing your reward risk on this trade here, even though 117.90 looks awfully appetizing, is that a correct vernacular? 113.82 is where the snipers are hanging out. So hopefully that helps you. And then one last one you wanted to take a look at, which was the GLD out there. And I would say on the GLD, you're going to take a look at these numbers, and I'd say ignore them. You've really got to pay attention to what's going on on the underlying instrument here. Not that you don't need to really in the IBB and the stocks, but here specifically with regard to gold, it's much easier. The GLD is trading off of one instrument, one ping Vasily. And so you really want to be paying attention to what those uh, profile levels are on the actual gold contract. But for your information, 127.02 is the top of the box on the daily. 124.77 is the bottom on the daily. And weekly, 124.67, 128.30. So I hope that that helps you out with regard to that information. I will share with you with regard to gold itself, prices trading below Stevie's red line. 1341.90. So does this suggest that you go long gold right here, right now? Probably not. This may just be a sideways move out here. Does it mean that this is going to go ahead or this, when I say this, gold is going to bust down and maybe move lower? Could be. It really could be. And that could be, you'd be looking at a price point of about 1313 to 1390, 1319.60. I know I could get that out. 1313. And 1319. Those would be the price levels that you would be looking for. If gold today, I don't know, it'll be on Sunday. 
But if it could close above 133420, that's the top of its 120 minute profile, then you'd be set up an A to B equals CD to the upside. We're not there yet. No reason for me to go ahead and draw that in uh, for you. Really not much that I see here in that trade right now. So that was for Larry in Detroit. I hope that that helps you out. We've got another question that has uh, come in here from Steve. Steve says, uh, hi, Steve. I say hi, Steve, back to you. Enjoy your show. I enjoy that you enjoy my show. Can you evaluate TNA? I'm in at lower prices after the crash. Thanks, Steve from Colorado. Well, congrats on that trade here. If we take a look at TNA, the first thing that you and I are going to go do is take a look at where is the Russell 2000 daily equity futures contract trading in relationship to its daily profile. And the number you want to really be watching here, and I know you're asking for TNA, which is the triple ETF, but that triple ETF in essence is trading off of this. And you want to watch the price point to 1532.40. You may not have, and by the way, this is a 10 minute delayed chart out there. You may not have access to this. You can get access to this. I believe you can. I believe you can just simply come over to the homepage of TFNN.com. I think you can sign up for a Nadex uh, trading platform, get funny money, and then get access to the Russell 2000 equity futures contract. I believe you can. If you can't, I apologize. But you want to pay attention to 1532.40. We'll do a little bit more analysis for you when we get back from this break. I'd like to do it for you as well. You can send me an email, steve at TFNN.com, or give us a call, 877 Nine two seven six six. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. It's a special month at TFNN, and with market volatility back, we've decided to hold an open house in our Tiger's Den. For this month only, you can get a full 30 days of Tiger's Den membership without paying anything. The Tiger's Den is our interactive chat room where you can chat with other tigers and tigresses along with the TFNN hosts during each of their programs. For all of the details and to start your 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den today, visit the front page of TFNN.com before this deal is gone. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment
is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at or trying to evaluate TNA. TNA is the uh, triple long ETF for the Russell 2000. And uh, what I have pulled up on my screen right now is Russell 2000 equity futures contract for Steve in Colorado. And, Steve, we're looking at a, a 30, a 60, a 240, a daily, and a weekly. Those are the five time frame charts that are on my screen. Um, I would say stay with this trade unless you were to see it close in the equity futures contract below the bottom of its weekly profile, which is also a bullish structured profile. And that is at 1528. If the Russell 2000 equity futures contract were to close below 1528.08, that would be problematic for you. One, you'd be below support. Two, if I put this daily contract up on my screen, you're going to get below Stevie's red line, which is at, well, 1527.60. What did I say? 15.28. So, I mean, get, give yourself a buck or two out there, okay? If, if both of those things happen, then you've got a problem as we speak right now. And the reason is because we would then have on the daily chart a falling price oscillator below zero. That's that bottom panel. That's not a good thing. You would be below support when we take a look at their market profiles. And, and then I don't have anywhere else to target for you as to where things would fall. I think at this day, well, I, I believe you're on the right side of the trade as we speak right now. But if price were to do the opposite, close below those levels, then I would say, mm, you know what, you've got some nice gains because you got into that trade early on off of this bounce and then just simply go ahead and stay there. Now, back to the daily, and if I look at the TNA out here, which I have up on my screen, hopefully you're watching on the show, you'll see some different profile levels out here, but the reality is it's not going to help you. And just simply because, see, the bottom of the box right now is 69.19. You're at 69.50. If I were to tell you it closed below 69.19, you've got problems from a weekly standpoint. It's not going to correlate to what you and I just looked at on the equity futures contract. So use use that, that set of data to better guide yourself uh, within this. Now, the good news is, okay, is that you are above Stevie's red line. And this should continue to move higher. And as we go back and take a look at the equity futures contracts for both the Russell, we're looking at all four, quite frankly, that's the weekly. Here's the daily. We take a look at the NQ, the NQ right now, and this is really key here. It's traded above 68.23. We know that snipers have basically been set up and there are some patterns that suggest they still may be here this afternoon. Price so far inside the NQ has bounced off of Stevie's red line. Remember, I said you can't fire your way to the short side. Well, you can do whatever you want, but don't fire away the short side until you see it close below Stevie's red line. Otherwise, you're just simply testing support out here, and so far we've seen it. So it looks to me like we're going to get to at least wave seven, letter G. Price is probably still going to be moving higher, less relative energy. So it's not as if anyone is out of the woods, but if the NQ today closes over 68.23, the top of its daily box, what that tells you and I is that price is going to go make a run for its highs. Now, not only will it make a run for its highs inside the NASDAQ, it'll probably take them out and then some. And you would then also have likely the Russell 2000 continuing to move higher. You'd have those two indices out in front. You see, the ES has to get to 27.73 before it really runs into resistance. That's the bottom of its daily box. The Dow, 25,605. So those two are not going to give us an early signal as to what the markets are doing out here. It's going to come preferably from the NQ. Now look, the NQ closed below 68.23. We just simply know that it is a mucho grande significant level of resistance. Doesn't mean it can't get taken out. It just tells you it is big time resistance. And what that tells both bulls and bears is if it does get taken out, well, then you run to the upside. Now, it's a huge box, okay? Here's the, here's the bearish side of that scenario. If price can't take out resistance, if he can't bust out the highs, 
Well, then price could try to go bust out the lows. And when you take a look at that box, which is basically evenly weighted, I mean the center line is pretty much in the center. The bottom is at 6246. At 600 points, uh, you know, 580 points, something like that to the uh, downside out there. But right now, what we know as of 135 in the afternoon is price is above resistance. And price could easily go take out the highs. What else do we want to pay attention to to give us some type of clues? Well, we talked about that 50-day exponential moving average. Now, that's going to apply to the S&P 500. It's not going to impact our decisions on the NQ or the Russell 2000, but it would give you the giddy-up and go inside the S&P 500 that you'd be looking for. What else do we want to pay attention to? Well, we want to pay attention to where is the, um, where is the advanced decline oscillator line for the New York Stock Exchange, is it above zero or below zero? It's above zero. Reading right now, 79.50. When it's above zero, who's in control? Bulls are in control. Inside the New York Stock Exchange, the bulls have been in control of price since February 15th. Today is what? The 23rd. So this is a bullish leading indication to you that it is the buyers that are in control of the, we'll call it maybe the wider swath of the market, New York Stock Exchange. Inside the NASDAQ composite, not just yet. It's still below zero. So you don't have a confirming message out here. Uh, it is down at minus 16. Inside the Dow, we're up above zero. And then when I take a look at the S&P 500, it's just one thing that matters to you and I, and that's going to be the 50-day. Does price, does the VIX have to close below the 50-day right now? No. I mean, if, if it does, I'm suggesting get out of the way. Don't be short. Take your profits if you've got them. Take your losses if you have to take them. And just, and just and park that money. Come back and take a look at it come Sunday night or Monday morning. Because it close below that, what typically will happen is you will see price inside the spot volatility index head down to the bottom of its Bollinger Band. Now, this is not the typical Bollinger Band that most people will use out here. But that gives you a price target, just to put this in perspective, of 771 out there. And you don't think that the S&P 500 will scream higher if that occurs? Hasn't occurred yet. But you want to watch that 50-day line like a hawk. So in summary here, New York Stock Exchange... Buyers are the ones in control and have been for many days. NASDAQ composite, no, not just yet. The Dow, as we speak right now, 137, is buyers that are in control. It'll be an end-of-day thing. And the S&P 500, actually, in the S&P 500, if we just simply take a look at it, we'll look at where price is trading in relation to Stevie's red line. I believe we are above that level. But just because I believe that doesn't mean that's the case. Let's actually prove it to ourselves and go take a look at where Stevie's red line is. And it's at 27.16. You're at 27.28. Now, what you know about by looking at this chart, is that four days ago, you saw a shooting star. I believe that might have been, well, four days ago would have been Tuesday, okay? And so it says that the top of that session, which, uh, let's see if I can figure that out here. Top of session, I believe, is 2754.42. In essence, is resistance. It is the opposite of a hammer candle, right? This happens when you've got price moving up. If price takes that out, OK, let's just say you're diehard. You don't want to give up on your short because I know there's some of you out there because you guys send me and gals send me those emails all the time telling me just how wrong I am. That's what trading's about. There's two sides of the trade. As long as we both use stops, we just let the market tell us who's right or wrong. Steve Rhodes with TFN. Right now, the S&P is bullish. We'll right back. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan its most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profiles So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com. Then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So for one of our dinners, uh, they want to take a look at uh, ticker symbols ABBV. And the uh, name of the company is ABV. I don't know what AbbVie does, um, but uh, as we take a look at its stock chart here, and with regard to its uh, TAS market profiles, everything looks hunky-dory. Meaning prices above the top of uh, each of the uh, time frames, daily, weekly, and monthly. So there's nothing here that looks really bearish. Now, in sympathy to the market pulling back, so too did it. So you're in it long-term, building position, great cash flow. So if we take a look at what it did here most recently, is had a breakout session on January 26th. And that was not a blow off top by any stretch of the imagination. This thing moved higher with 19 million shares. And all price did during the five, six, seven day decline out here, February 6th, was when it pulled back with 14 million shares. So breaks out with 19, pulls back with 14, pulls back and tests the uh, bottom of its TAS daily profile. You're back above it. Now, that doesn't mean that there's not a bit of uh, turbulence inside this equity right now, because this thing here on the trading day of February 20th and the 21st created two of those little shooting star candles. So if this can clear the highs of those candles, that's 121.55. It's just the 121.55 that you'll focus on. Then price heads back to the top. Now, is it going to take out that high without volume 120, uh, 125.86? I don't know. Probably not. That was a big volume day, 19 million shares. So this thing might be just simply now in a consolidation, right? If it gets above 125.86, closes back below with light volume out here, could just be a fairly decent consolidation level. 
125 to 104. Doesn't mean you exit it, just means you anticipate that that's what could be unfolding out here. If it closes above the high of January 26 with light volume, that's fine. Uh, no problem there. Then this continues to move higher. Um, is there any problem that we see on a weekly basis? No, not really. On a monthly basis? No, I don't see any problems. If I take a look at the different time frames out here, here's the daily to look for issues. It did have a TD sequential count back here on January 30th, but uh, it's done its pullback, come back into support. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. If I look for other topping patterns, when we go take a look at a weekly chart, I don't see it here on the weekly chart. If I look at a monthly time frame out here, I don't see it either. So longer term, which this is what you're in this for, looks pretty good. But it could just simply have that larger consolidation area. Um, and we won't know until it really tests those highs. But first, it has to get above those two shooting star candles, uh, really the February 20, 20th session of 121.55, but otherwise looks like a, a good trade out there. Now, I don't have any other questions that I see. Oh, Bob wants to take a look at uh, KC out here. And I'm assuming, let me, let me, uh, where, uh, where are my commodity charts? Oh, boy. Um, where? Uh, is it right here? Do I have it here? Okay. Looks like looks like I might. Well, I, I might. So what what contract is it? Is it currently the March contract? Just uh, Bob, too quickly is. It uh, looks like it might be, but just give me the high sign out. There's coffee futures. Uh, I, I wish I knew for sure. Um, but uh, give give me give me the high sign, would you, Bob? Is it? Uh, is it the because we're taking a look at because what we want to do for Bob and Spokane is first, first take a look at the right contract out here. It can't be now. Nah, it's it's it can't be. It can't it can't be. What which contract is it? Is it is it April? Is it April May? Oh uh, God! It's it's it does not. It's not really trading here right now. It doesn't look like it. So uh, let's just simply let's simply throw something up here. Um, but that would help me. I apologize because I don't trade it. So, and therefore I don't know. It's not that that's for sure. So can't be the M contract. There it is. Is it? What is it? So I'm, I'm looking for some help. Uh, that's not working real well. So, um, yeah, maybe it is. Maybe it is March. Here's, here's, here's all I can do is give, is give you the March date out here. Then as we speak right now, here's the daily. Are we trading today? Yeah, it is the 23rd. So I, about the best information that I can provide to you is you have a brand new box that formed today. This is for the coffee contract. This is for the futures contract. This is for uh, the uh, month, of, uh, month of March. So brand new profile formed. And 119.95 is a level that you want to see this close above. Because if it does that, I'm, I'm, and I don't know if I, I, I don't want to make the assumption that you're long. But if, you're looking, if you are long or you're looking to get long, you think there's a bottom that's in here, you'd really like to see this get above the bottom of that daily box. So far, it's just acted as resistance. Now, I do have a 10-minute delay on this, so it may not be traded at 119.45. If this can close above 119.95, that's the bottom of the daily, price should make its way up to 123.40. That would be a level you would want to, well, first it would act as resistance. You'd like to see it close above that area. If it could do that, that was 123.40, then the next area you're looking at is 124.18. That's the bottom of the daily. You really want to see it be able to get above that level. So I hope that's what you were looking for. And if not, just uh, ping me and we will... We will uh, we'll figure that out. Uh, you know, we'll just simply come back and take a look at it. But uh, so hopefully that helps. Uh, top dog. No, Danny in Atlanta wants to take a look at bonds. So if we take a look at the 30-year Treasury out here, we can do it two different ways, Danny. The first way is to um, throw these profiles up here. So let me see if I can uh, do that. And while that is happening... We're going to come over to Stevie's other set of charts out here, and we're going to see that right now, the, so what the 30-year Treasury has is been doing is making a rather large A to B equals CD pattern. 
And we can see that in essence, it's basically made the 1 to 1.618 level. Now, what we don't have today, actually, even though the candle looks nice, we don't have a bullish reversal candle out here. I'm going to get rid of the A to B equals CD pattern. Because what you can also see is price has been moving lower, doing it with less relative energy. Oftentimes, where you will see some type of top or bottom, in this case here, a bottom form. And what price has done today, which we haven't really seen it do since, to give you the date for the most part, since December 29, 2017, is looks like price is going to close above Stevie's red line out there, 143.10. So this is suggesting to you that, hey, maybe you're going to see a bounce out here or bottom in the 30-year treasury. If that's going to happen, then we come back to our market profiles. And on our market profiles, we look at the daily chart. Now, here's the problem. Maybe a problem, maybe not. See how today's session candle is orange? What this means, Danny, is on Sunday or on Monday, we're likely to see a brand new set of profiles. You can see what they are today, but they're likely going to change. So right now, the call is... Price is up against, I would say, significant resistance. The bottom of the box at 144. I'd say before you do anything, you wait till Sunday, Monday, when we can see what that new daily profile, if one forms, what it looks like. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank Bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN.
back, uh, folks. So when we began the show, I was asked a question inside the Tigers Den if I thought that there was a head and shoulders pattern that was forming inside the uh, inside the NDX 100. I've got the NQ up on my screen right now on a 10-minute basis, and it's always good to know your limitations, basically what you suck at. And I suck at identifying head and shoulders patterns. I know they're very easy to see and spot. I'm just no good at it. It's like if my ball is in the rough and I've got to hook a ball around a tree on a dog leg, I know I'm not going to hit that shot because it's going to veer right and, you know, be knocked out. Where So got to know what you're good at and what you're not good at. But what I can do when I take a look at a 10-minute chart is I just pulled out an old tool out here. This is called the Rhodes Momentum Indicator System. And, in fact, with the markets like we have them now with the swings, it's really an important tool to be paying attention to. You'll see green and red boxes. You'll see letters U and D. They're referring to uptrend, downtrend, or C for I don't need to go into it. What you can see is when you see the red boxes, it tells you there is buying pressure. Now, when we began the show out here, we talked about how this possible, still possible, that there are sellers that are lined up. We are now in wave number seven. Price is still moving higher due with less relative energy. Price simply, though, is above Stevie's red line. This could be an A to B equals CD to the upside. And if it is, one thing is for certain. With regard to this tool and this indicator out here, we'll continue to see these red boxes swarm. There, it's like a sprint. It's like this is like the, this is like the uh, Usain Bolt system for being able to identify when the race has begun and where it's being run to out here. And it's not that green boxes are bad, okay? In fact, when they form, and if I switch over to a daily chart out here, as we will, when they do form, they also help to identify selling pressure. But when you close above the high of one of those green boxes, like the NQ has on a daily basis, and now you've got the red boxes, it tells you that buyers are the ones that are out there as we speak right now. Folks, great to be here with you this week. We'll see you on Monday. Have a great weekend. Take care. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.